Autism and the Diagnosis Next Steps for Parents To discover that your child has autism is probably one of the most difficult things you will ever have to deal with. Autism is not a disease or an incurable illness, but it will change your life, defining and altering you as you learn to become the parent of a child with autism. Autism changes the kind of life that will be led by your child, the choices he will be able to make and the choices that will be made on his behalf. This uncertain future can be a source of fear and anxiety for the parents of a child with autism. In moments of fear and anxiety, parents need to remind themselves to live one day at a time and to look back on each day feeling that they have loved and helped their child in the ways that they were able to. As a parent, you have hopes and dreams for your child, and those hopes and dreams are intertwined with the life you envision for yourself. After the diagnosis, you realize that your child's life will most likely not travel along the path that you wished and hoped for. The life you thought your child would have, which is often filled with social expectations of achievement and status, and is closely connected to the family future you envision for yourself, will be changed irrevocably by the diagnosis. In some ways, the diagnosis results in a kind of grieving process in which you as a parent will let go of the vision of the future that you imagined for yourself and your child. Some people may disagree with what I am saying here, may feel that this is a pessimistic viewpoint, but the reality is that autism will set you and your child on a different road to the one you originally contemplated for yourself and your child. As a family, you will need to adjust to the autistic family member and to help him to navigate a world that has not yet learned to fully accept differences and disabilities. On the other hand, some parents may experience a profound sense of relief because now there is a name to the disability. You are no longer wandering in the dark. The diagnosis offers an explanation for some of the behaviors and attitudes of your child that you did not understand previously. This process of learning to accept the diagnosis is not pessimistic, nor is it disrespectful to the potential of your child. It is simply you as a parent seeking to understand and come to terms with a different reality. As time passes, you will also realize that your autistic child is still your child above all else, that the love you have for him does not diminish or change, that this love will grow stronger as you begin to appreciate your child's daily and constant striving to belong and the enormity of the challenges he must face to survive in a world dominated by neurotypicals. When you understand your child's autism, you also begin to appreciate his vulnerability, and this, I believe, helps to grow your love, appreciation, and respect for your child. There are many treatments, therapies, centers, and schools that seek to help and cater for the needs of children with autism. The internet is now flooded with information about autism, and reading the stuff can be confusing. Parents are desperate to help their child and will often ask what should we do, what therapies or treatments should we pursue. There are a lot of therapies and treatments out there, but families can't always afford them. In most countries, there are only limited services available to support the needs of children with disabilities. Let's look briefly at some of the options, treatments and therapies that are available. Medical treatment by a neurologist or psychiatrist. Medication is prescribed for the autistic child to manage the symptoms of autism, example medication to treat anxiety or medication to treat difficulties with concentration. Speech therapy. A speech therapist provides therapy to treat childhood speech disorders or adult impairments. Occupational therapy. Occupational therapists are health professionals who help patients to develop, recover, or improve the skills needed for daily living and working. Physiotherapy. Physiotherapists help people affected by injury, illness, or disability through movement and exercise, manual therapy, education, and advice. Psychology. A psychologist will develop a treatment plan which includes talk therapy to help people learn to better cope with life and relationship issues and also mental health conditions and disabilities. 
Applied Behavior Analysis Program. Sometimes called ABA therapy, it is a special type of therapy designed to help children on the spectrum develop social and emotional skills by shaping their behavior and by seeking to reduce or eliminate undesirable behaviors. Floor Time Therapy. The DIR or Floor Time Model claims to promote development by encouraging children to interact with parents and others through play. It is claimed that this interaction will help children reach milestones, milestones in their emotional development. Special schools, remedial schools and mainstream schools with inclusion programs. A special school is one that caters specifically for an autistic child or a child with a disability and uses a special structured program to educate the child. A remedial school is one in which remedial educational programs are designed specifically to help give learners a bit more individual attention in smaller groups and often at a slightly slower pace. This will then give the learner the ability to catch up the skills that they are lacking and possibly even attend a mainstream school in the future. A mainstream school caters for children of normal intellectual ability and has a standard curriculum that allows a learner to matriculate or to complete grade 12. Dietary treatments. Example, a gluten-free, casein-free diet or a diet that will seek to normalize the eating patterns of a child who eats only limited kinds of foods and can be categorized as a fussy eater. Social skills training. A professional such as a teacher or an educational psychologist will provide training and practice opportunities to help a child to acquire social skills such as greeting, conversing, playing, socializing. Cognitive behavior therapy. This is a special kind of therapy provided by a psychologist who helps the person to recognize negative thought patterns and then to respond with more positive and helpful responses and behaviors. I would like to share my first personal experiences of choosing an appropriate treatment for my daughter. In my case, she was diagnosed with PDD-NOS. PDD-NOS stands for Pervasive Developmental Disorder, not otherwise specified. PDD-NOS was one of several previously separate subtypes of autism that have now folded into the single diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. At the time of the diagnosis, my daughter was already attending speech therapy, as well as a special school that focused on language development. However, as she was not making significant progress in her ability to communicate, I felt that maybe we needed to do more. We then went to a special conference in Cape Town that dealt with various topics under the umbrella of autism. We met a therapist trained in VB, which is a form of ABA, which focuses more strongly on the functional use of language by the child, as well as learning through play and teaching in the child's natural environment. This program helped my daughter to communicate better and in a much more functional way, and this in turn helped her to improve her behavior. There were less meltdowns because she could express herself and did not become so frustrated as would happen in the past. The program was meant to be focused and very intensive, but we didn't do anything near the number of hours that were recommended. Even though we did not go by the book, the therapy helped a lot. Language and the ability to communicate, which developed through the Verbal Behavior Program, made life better and easier for my daughter. She could express her needs and wants over time, say what she liked or did not like, and comment on things in her world. This made her calmer, less anxious, probably because she felt more in control of her personal situation. She still had repetitive behaviors, was still attached to special objects. She did communicate, but not in the way that her peers did, and not with the same understanding and insight. But autism did not go away. It never would. The therapy, however, definitely improved her quality of life. Here are some suggestions when it comes to selecting a therapy or treatment for a child with autism. 
Um, before venturing out to find help for their child, parents must first attend to their own needs. Parents need to have someone to talk to and provide ongoing support in order to process their feelings, whether it be a friend, a family member or a counsellor. If parents help themselves and learn to cope with their own emotions, they will be able to better help their child. Now let's look at the therapies. Therapy for the child needs to be done daily. It should be intensive and should engage the child for long periods of time, but it should also be fun and interesting. One hour of therapy once a week may help, but it will not help in the way that two or three hours of therapy daily would benefit a child. Children should also have enough time to be children, and we have to respect their way of being, playing and spending time. We have to remember that we are seeking to help and support our children, that we are not trying to change them. What therapy should offer? Therapy needs to address the areas of disability found in autism by doing the following. Enabling language development, stimulating communication, encouraging social interaction, expanding the knowledge, daily activities, and range of interests of the child. Knowledge should be expanded, for example, from elephants only to other animals, from cars only to airplanes or ships, from pure fantasy to stories with historical elements. Parents should also focus on the physical and emotional health of their child. Disciplines such as yoga, meditation, health and fitness, sport and good nutrition are all important for overall well-being, good health and quality of life. Parents should also pay attention to the acquisition of daily life skills, such as independent grooming, cleaning, cooking, the child learning to help and do for themselves, and also to be able to help others. One-on-one -on -one therapy and teaching is preferable to a group setting because it is more effective at facilitating social interaction and communication. Children who don't have skills may get lost in a group. They need a lot of time, focus and individual attention to help them develop language and to stimulate communication and social interaction. On the other hand, group work and social interaction must not be neglected either because it is also an area where autistic children do not cope. When considering any treatment or therapy, Parents need to be wary of claims that a particular treatment or therapy will cure autism. Advertising of treatments and therapies can be very aggressive and do try to create the impression that once a child does sufficient therapy or undergoes enough treatment, he will no longer be autistic. That is, he will be cured of his autism. Such claims of cure should be regarded with caution and should not be believed. Autism is not a disease. It is a permanent neurological difference. The thinking, responses, communication and interaction and the perceptions of an autistic child are all special and form part of who they are. This is a difference and way of being and thinking that must be respected even while we seek to help our children and encourage them to grow and develop. Thank you for listening. My next post will cover the topic of disability and acceptance.